Hello and welcome to today's Happy Maths Hour. Thank you very much for joining us. And today it's about puzzles, games and proofs without words. Can't Tony, guarantee that. Welcome. There might be a few words. <laughs> <laughs> it, but, but they're proofs that you can do without words. It's, um... Exactly. And as usual, it'll be just a chat. Caroline and I chatting, hoping to entertain you. So tune in to Happy Massa. If you're with us, we're delighted to have you. And you'll see two pictures of Caroline and me there. And you've probably seen them before, but uh, Caroline's doing some maths with bubbles and I'm doing some maths with a little boy in South Africa. And there's in a classroom with other children around. Okay, so uh, you also see two pictures there. And a lot of this is about squares, okay? So our first slide is about just taking a piece of paper that's square, okay, pull it away from the screen and therefore you can see it, and folding this piece of paper and learning just from that action, folding it into four. And you can see it on the screen there. And by folding it into a diagonal, as you see on picture number one, and then you can see there, picture number two, folding it over and flattening it as in picture number three, folding it again as in picture number three. And then you've got here, you see, you've got four pieces um, in this fold. I've I'll got mine here, line. Tony. I've Caroline's here. also showing you one. Okay. Okay. And then on the bottom, you'll see, um, so now you imagine it, just keep in mind that the the original triangle has been folded into four and the pencil at the top is showing you an angle and number five and that's at the center where you have 360 degrees or whatever you don't even know, know, need to know about degrees that angle all once one all, all the way around is divided into four so those are what we call right angles or if you like, 90 degrees. Now, Caroline, you're do Caroline's doing it. So it's better than me holding it up. She's actually doing it. And um, you talk about it, Caroline. You say a bit more about what you're doing. <clears throat> it's, it's a really simple but very revealing investigation. Because one of the biggest mysteries is, well, one of the things that... Um, people have to learn is about triangles and for example that a straight line is 180 degrees well given that that's a very very powerful piece of knowledge when you're doing geometric proofs or working out angles with geometry because you know that that a straight line is 180 degrees if you fold that line in half then you know that each of those angles is 90 degrees and with that knowledge, armed with that knowledge, and the, this one we've folded in four, we know we've got four 90 degree angles. Well, that would actually then be showing that each of those 180 plus 180 is 360 all the way around. It, and the, what we're doing with this is working out, I'm sorry, I forgot what we're doing. <laughs> It's not only. We're, well, so, I so, think uh, it's, it's, Caroline... it's a square investigation, and this it, it it is based around the fact that we have three hundred and sixty degrees. When we a little more than. Can degrees. I just say something, Caroline? I mean, yes, basically, we were chatting about pedagogy last week, and this is yes. this is what we're doing. And and there's a this emphasis in school for children learning properties of two dimensional shapes. And the square is, an, is, is just a, a two-dimensional shape, okay? So what can they find out about a square? By doing the folding that Caroline showed you, not only do they learn something about angles, discover something, they discover something about the four edges of the square being the same length, okay? So we so we folded that one on itself, therefore that angle, that length is the same as the one below, and that length is the same as the one below that. But then when we fold them again, we discover that for sure, we're certain that all four lengths are the same. OK. 
And then another thing that they can see is when you open it all out again, that the diagonals of the um, square bisect each other and they divide the square into four right angle triangles. And so there's a, there's a lot of interesting things about the square. And then you can turn it round and you can see it's what we call, it's got rotational symmetry. Uh, so there's many things about the square that you can discover just by folding a piece of paper and not tell the children these properties as Caroline and I are telling you, are telling you today, but ask questions what do you notice about number two and number three? But actually with the children having paper in their hands and doing the folding, what can you talk to your friend? And, you know, then we're going to ask you, you can tell us what you found out about this shape. So it's a way of teaching, which is, um, which is organized around the teacher asking questions rather than telling children facts and the children finding out for themselves, guided by the teacher um, and being given activities, in this case, folding a piece of paper from which they're going to observe, notice some mathematical properties, which they won't necessarily know the name of. They won't. I mean, I was talking about rotational symmetry of this shape. Well, you know, well, that... When I say, I just say it looks the same, whether you have it that way or that way or that way. It looks the same, but it, this is for younger learners, but it, it is actually facing a different way. So that is rotational symmetry. But all you need to do is say it looks the same because it, that's the whole point. It must look the same if it's got symmetry. And then you... You look at flowers and you look at other objects uh, and you see that you can turn them around so they look the same. When they're not turned all the way around, but when they're only turned part of the way around, they look the same. And you can see rotational symmetry, but not, not for four turns, but maybe for five. A, a flower with five petals on, a sort of daisy-like flower with five petals on, has rotational symmetry of order five. So you're what, looking at... One thing I like about this as well is that one of the questions that gets asked a lot is that how do I know that this is 90 degrees on a square? Well, I've taken an A4 sheet of paper, a, a normal piece, piece of paper, and that has right angles on it. But if I hadn't started with a right angle, a piece of paper with right angles on it, how would we know that this here is a right angle, which comes, we need to know that in a minute. We're going to really need to know it as one of the activities we're going to do. And, and it's by when you fold it through the middle, you know that those are right angles because you've folded the, them on themselves and it makes a total of 360. They're divided exactly into four. So you know each one is 90 degrees. And then you know that these edges are exactly the same length. Therefore, these angles are the same. And that's 90 degrees. So you know that another investigation lets you know that 180 degrees which way up are we doing this if I write that can you see it you can't see it but anyway all three angles add to 180 therefore that plus that plus that makes 180 therefore that and that is 45 therefore that is 90 and it's it's actually a progression and you can actually prove to to I don't, is that an actual proof Tony or is that simply to my satisfaction well, so that an actual proof? It, well, you can turn it into an absolutely rigorous proof by stating it very precisely, but it is, yes. And I mean, to repeat it, if you look at number diagram number six, would you like to put the, the mm -hmm. slide back and we'll carry on? Yeah. But Go if ahead. you look at, at diagram number six there, you can see the, the pencil, that's the square folded into four equal um, uh, triangles and the and the pen, and number six the pencil is on an angle there and um, you could fold it again and you could see that the the uh, the angle um, uh, uh, on the other side of the base is the same and your angles add up to 180 uh, and um, that the, the angle there where the pencil is in number six must be 45 and there are two of them at the corner there so they add up to 90. Um, do you Yes, we, we do um, a lo another lovely paper folding thing, which proves the angles of a triangle add up to 180. That's called trifold. And that, okay. that's another, another uh, proof without words. I mean, you do use words, but it's, you can see it. It's, 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 it's tangible. You can hold it in your hand and see it's just obvious. 
And Caroline, I think it's about time to play a game, don't you? <gasps> oh, yes, yes, yes. I love playing games. Oh, uh, Andy, go I, ahead. She's she's crazy about games. But before I <laughs> before we play the game, um, and Caroline's a bit excitable today um, uh, because we're we're celebrating Caroline's birthday today. So happy birthday, Caroline. What does your badge say, Caroline? 60. Says, birthday girl. No. Oh, <laughs> I birthday <laughs> girl. Given away my, a secret. <laughs> my, my great nieces and nephews, they were going off in the car and the mother had to stop the car and come back because the children wanted to, they'd forgotten to give me this. So I had to have to wear this all day long today. A birthday girl. Okay, so let's play a game for the birthday girl. Okay, so the, let me explain the game and then we'll we'll play the game against e each other, but we'll do it on a computer, which will be fun. And uh, we'll give you the link so you can play it on the computer, uh, against the computer, either with a friend, you know, so you, you just do, do it as we'll show you, or you can play against the computer and see if you can beat the computer. But um, on this slide, it says, um, play for fun, think to win, play to learn. Okay. Um, so you've got to make a square in your color. Now, that's the object of the game. That's why it says that at the top. And you either choose to be blue or red to start with. OK, and once you've chosen your color, you, you're you're going to put markers on that board of your color, little uh, counters or something. Now, go back to play for fun. Of course, people like games, but they usually want to win. And to win, you've often got to think you'll find this is one of those games and you've got to think mathematically, critically, logically. Um, in order to win. And so it's really good for developing your critical thinking. And uh, while you're playing, you're learning. Okay, you're learning all sorts of strategies and mathematical ideas. And so, the thing is, it's also, it's, it's, we'll see, we have diagonal squares. And this is a huge issue with learners of all ages even adults, they're like, yes, but if it's tilted, it's not a square, right? Because they're thinking well, let's, it's a let, we, we've, You've taken yeah, away the element the of surprise. Is, the point, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm spoiling the surprise. But it does. <laughs> okay, it okay, deals with okay. some of these deep-seated So, so how, do you t how do you tell somebody, if you're doing it online, for example, well, you can click on it, but if you've not got a, you know, like a computer game where you can click, how do you tell somebody where if I'm blue and I want to put it where you see it on that, I want to put it on that particular spot, then I give the two, um, I say it's on D4, okay? So it's D across and four up, and that's where the blue marker is. And the red marker is on E, uh, which is across to E and then up three, so that's E3. So the game is runs like this. It's the first player to make a square in their color is the winner. And you take it in turns to claim one of the dots with your marker by putting your color on that dot. OK, so Caroline, um, this. Ready? Yes, oh, this is this is the link for it, which we will give you to its the Enrich computer. Um, Caroline is going to put that up and we're going to play this game against the computer. Are you ready now? Yes, yes. Okay. Right, um, there, there it is. It is. Um, so you can play it as one player, in other words, play it against the computer. Can you make you it play... larger by going full screen, Caroline, or is this as large as it'll this get? This is as large as it can get within StreamYard. Okay, that's perfect then. Okay, so we're going to make it a two-player game, shall we, Caroline? And I'll play against you. Yes, let's you. play a two-player game. Now and we're just we're just doing it as a demonstration and to show you, and then you can, if you're interested, you can try it for yourself. Okay, so using Tony's Namega Chill, you can go first, Tony. You're the okay. Senior. So I'm going to go on C three. C three. So that will be this one. I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on 
B4. B, um, C4. C4. Right, so I'm going to go on D2. D2, I'm looking at the, this is using, oh, 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 I might be in trouble already. Okay, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on E2. Okay. So I am going to go on um let me just see now. Um right, I'm going to go on D1. D1 D1. Okay. I think Tony's got the best strategies than I have. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? Thinking, yes, I'm going to go on C1. Right. Okay, I'm going to go on C2. C2. Okay, now Tony's forcing me to go on D3, but if she might have already managed to get three and I haven't noticed them. Not no, sure. no, no, not, not yet. yet. Not, not yet. yet. Um, right. The Tony's so... got the head that the, the uh, she's ahead of me because she's got some, some. Ah, oh, well. Um... She's got a couple of places where you're forcing me to go in a particular so... place. What shall I do? Um, I'm going to go on um, uh, well, I'm going to go on B2. B2, right. So now I have to go on B3. And Tony sport my square that I was working on there. So I'm going to go on B5. B5. Mm, what's she doing? What's she doing? Oh, I'm looking for odd squares. I'm looking for... What, what is Tony doing? <laughs> no, uh, floundering is the answer, Caroline. Okay, well, in that case... <laughs> um, It's not like you to flounder. Okay. Um, yes, yes, yes. So, um, <laughs> so I think I am going to go on. Um, Sorry, D I didn't say I'm, I'm on C5. Go on. D, D4. 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 You haven't won. No, yet, right? I haven't won yet. I have. Oh, brilliant. Now, this is what Caroline was talking about earlier. Okay. She, this is a square. Can you see? It's a square. And what she has managed to do is beat me, of course. Brilliant, Caroline. Well done. It doesn't happen uh, very often, folks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I hope you can see that even though it's tilted, we call it a tilted square. And this is a surprise to many people. They'll say, oh, that's not a square. And what they're imagining is <coughs> that a square has, has to have the edges this way horizontal and this way vertical. But of course it doesn't. You can have a tilted square like that. And we'll talk more about that. So we'll just leave you with the thought that um, this is a great game. You can, you can just make the dots on a piece of paper with a pencil and play it against a friend. And um, if you don't have colored markers, you can, you can put a, you know, you can put a cross for you and your partner can put a, um, a circle around it for them, uh, around the pin for them, and you can you, play so it with here. pencil and paper. I'll show you on here. Uh, this is, I play this on Zoom with, with my two T's. 
it's part of our thing. So, okay, we've had enough. Now it's ready to play a game. But it's a very valuable game. So it helps with visualization. It helps with understanding squares. It helps with 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 problem solving. It helps with lots of things. And it's fun. And yes, so we might do. We use the one that the one to five eight um, A to E if we do a five by five. And then yeah, one does a circle and one does a cross. And and then sometimes one of us is won and we don't even notice because we don't have a computer to tell us that it's that we've won. But it's it, it can be done by between two people anywhere on earth as long as they've got a, 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 and the means to do pencil paper and the means to see. Or they can both mm. record it in uh, independently as well. And the other, you see, there's so much you can learn from this. I mean, for example, the red lines that you see in the game that Carolyn and I played, um, you can learn about gradient and you can learn about the conditions for lines to be at right angles. So, for example, um, the red lines um, on the edge there have gradient, what we call gradient one. And what that means is that for every... Um, time you go across one to get the next point on that red edge you go up one so it's gradient one and um the other edges have got gradient minus one because you go across one um, in the other direction which is the negative direction to go to go up one and so you've got those two lines which have gradient one and minus one at right angles to each other. But of course, you can have other gradients. It just ha happens that that's the stilted square we've chosen today. So can we go back to the PowerPoint, Caroline? There it is. Now, there's something that's a lot of fun, which can be a party game, or it can be uh, something that the children do in class, or you can mark out a grid with, in this case, it's only got 16 chairs and 16 points. Or if you want to, you can mark it with points um, on the ground in which people can stand so they don't actually have to sit on a chair. And so the way you play this is exactly the way we played the game against the computer. So, but you can have two teams of people. And um, so they tell the member of their team the first team to go says go and sit on and specifies which chair the person's got to sit on and then um the next the other team sends somebody to sit on another chair and just like caroline and i use red and blue to claim the um the points on on the board um you can use uh, people um, or they can have, uh, you know, coloured uh, shirts or headbands or cards they hold up that show which team they're on, or you can have boys against girls or something like that. And it's the first team to have four of the members of the team sitting at the corners of a square on those chairs, either a straight across and straight up square or a tilted square, but any square. It's the first team to get there. Um, four team members sitting on four squares, four chairs in a square that wins the game. And of course, it doesn't have to be chairs. It can be just points marked, uh, you know, in, in, in those places. And, and the, the great advantage of people maths is that by physically engaging it with activity and not keeping still, but actually moving around and, and being part of the action in the mathematics, it makes it more memorable for children to remember properties and um, and of course they're learning while they're playing the game. So that's that's people maths. Um, so let's move on to the next one. These are called geoboards. <laughs> geoboards, wooden boards, and you use um, rubber bands on them. Or the one on the right, I've used some string um, to demonstrate something uh, on that board. And on the top left, you have some ladies, you can see they're knocking nails into the board um, with hammers and they're making their own geo boards. So the way we do it is they have a, a, a square with the 
um, points marked on it of paper, which they stick on the piece of wood, and then they know exactly where the nails should go and place them, knock them in precisely um, in this grid and making, um, they can make a five by five geo board is the one in the middle. They can make a three by three geo board is the one on the left, or they can make a circular geo board. And that one has got 18 pins around a circle. And, and there's a pin uh, in the center of it as well. And, and then you need it. What's, what's beautiful about that is, is you can literally play with all the different shapes you can make and you've got the flexibility of a rubber band which means you, you're not limited to squares and and you've got you need some rubber bands oh can't and, see those tony can't oh well never that. mind you can imagine yeah. them you need some rubber, rubber bands, bands yeah and uh it's it, it's a Interesting. One of the teachers who came on one of our courses said, oh, when I go back to school, um, it's the woodwork um, uh, technology class um, that's going to make these. And I'm going to make all the all the learners in that class make one and then they'll be used as a class set in the school and, and the children will all be able to use these geo boards. And there's so much learning that they they give rise to. They're a very, a very nice little uh, device for doing geometry and doing it quickly and easily because it takes quite a long time to draw a square or a triangle accurately but immediately in, in just a fraction of the time you can put your rubber band around the pins and make the different shapes and there are great um, apps you can use and we're going to be sharing one with you in a minute but the 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 doing it with your hands on you it's a visceral learning it's something that you can visualize so much more if you've actually had your hands and your eyes all immersed in it rather than and and you still have the flexibility of being able to make any shape that you can make with that pattern of nails you might like to make one at home with your children and then you know you can uh, look up geo boards on the web and and you can remember some of the things that caroline and i have talked about and it makes a great um activity for the home a toy that they can you know they can learn from playing with now can you see this caroline um, yes we can see that come let a bit me closer. bring it closer to the, the camera okay yeah. now can you see that it's got some rubber bands on it i'm just going to turn my light off so i can see because i'm being dazzled by my light yes we can see the rubber bands yes we can right now that has got 18 pins around it it's the same geo board that you see in the um in this on the slide but i've marked out three eighteenths right so this is to show you how you can use this to do fractions right so there's 18 you, the circle's made up of an, an 18 are gone so it's got yes. 18 pins and 18 edges if you were going to join them all. yes and yes. you've used so you've taken three of those with a rubber band and you've split that even within the three you split that into another three so you've gone with three and then you've got the rubber band coming down from each of those onto the center yeah you've got and, three and, eighteenths so you've got uh, three I'm, three eighteenths and i'm going to show you another um uh, image about this in a minute i bet you'll see how powerful it is to add fractions and um what you can see as well from this is that as I went round these pins, the 18 pins, I could do this six times to fill it all up. Instead of having three 18ths, I could have 18 18ths, and each section is one sixth. And you can right. uh, mark out different fractions and add them up. And so, use different colour rubber bands to indicate the different size fractions. Yeah, I said it wrong. It's not three, three 18ths, it's three 18ths making three eighteenths up so you've got three eighteenths marked out on of and, your whole total circle and th and and six of those will fill the whole all the way yeah. around and so they're each one sixth and that is showing you the fraction three over 18 or three divided by 18 is the same as the fraction one sixth it's so it, one six, okay, it's, and it's visual it's lovely yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's lots of ways you can use and play with these and play and, and learn through playing so there's a uh, an app on online which you can get on your phone and there's the link to it 
There's a link to it, but you can just go to your app store or your mm. your your um, Google store and just type in GeoBoard, the last eight characters, and just get it at the app store. Now, you'll see um, they're black, and you can see the circular GeoBoard uh, on the top right there with some writing around it. And you can see the rubber bands at the bottom, different colored rubber bands. But there's only 12 pins around that one. And so it's marked out with two 12s, okay? And it's marked out the green is actually two 12s, but the two 12s make a sixth. And so you can see that the green fractions are sixth, and three of them, um, if you look at that, is it three? Yeah, um, three oh, two six. six. Two Wait. six make a third. Okay. And then if you put up the, the yellow and the green, you've got three six, which mm. make half. Yes. So and you can you... also see from there is that a third plus... Um, a sixth is a half. You can see that from there. Isn't Quite that beautiful? Visual. I'd never, Isn't, yeah. So you've got lots of ways of learning about adding fractions by using the circular geo board. And um, the, the, the one that's divided into 12 is good, actually, because you're already used to the clock face divided into 12. So that has a lot, you know, you can do a lot with it. Mm. And the other, the other demonstrations on there were done with the same app. I did them with the same app. And the, uh, the two that have got quadrilaterals on them are showing you the different quadrilaterals that you can make with just nine pins. So what I've done is divide the, um, the board there up with the red rub rubber band from top to bottom. It's got colored rubber bands on top of it, but basically it's divided up so that uh, each of the quarters of it is showing you a three by three um, array. And so you've got a square and a parallelogram in the top left area of one, and you've got a, a quadrilateral um, with area two on the right in yellow. And in green, you've got a, on the bottom, you've got a rectangle area two, and then you've got a trapezium. You can see it's got parallel edges in orange, which is area one and a half. And then going over to the right, you've got another different parallelogram and another trapezium, and um, or two more trapezia, and some more quadrilaterals. So you can see um, the question that um, we asked was how many different quadrilaterals, uh, four-sided shapes, can you make? And there are lots of them. And then on the bottom, on the right, there's some, some we asked the same question about triangles, and um, so your children can play with it and find as many different triangles as they can on the three by three pin board. And uh, you see lots of triangles. So um, this is something that you can play with, with a, 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 just a piece of wood. OK, and it can be a three by three board um, or it can be any number of pins that you've decided on. And it can be the circular one or you can do it on the app. But I actually recommend the, the physical thing. Hmm. So the question that you might ask is, how many squares can you make on nine pins? Now, this is a slightly different question. And, this, and these are now different squares, just in different places, uh, but anywhere on the nine pins. Uh, so just think a minute. Uh, how many squares could you make? What areas would they be? Um, okay, so we're not going to dwell on this. This is not a maths lesson. This is more a chat. So here we have the six squares. Okay, and if we call the um, the one in the middle at the well, the four that are all the same. If we call that one square unit of area, then the um, one on the top left is four square units. And the one just underneath it is like the square that Caroline made when she uh, when she made uh, when she won the square it game. It's a tilted square, and that's uh, area actually is two square units. 
Um, and you can Isn't get. It's fascinating to actually work out the unit, the, the area, when there are diagonals. And at first, it can be a big mystery. But once you start to see it, and we're going to talk about that again in a minute, but once you start to see it, a, a, a big light bulb goes on and you, you, you can get really excited about well I can <laughs> about um actually finding the area of things making it, it makes so much sense suddenly Go on, so, what have you got there Tony uh, so, well what I wanted to do is just to, to show why that area if you if I was to say same size as my my um uh, th th this board here it would be even more convincing why it's half you see i folded the four corners down into the center right and they oh, i'm going to do that too so i've got my my trying my square here i'm going to fold the four corners of my so this is area what that would be four square units if we were, if we were looking at these yeah i have four squares on there now i'm folding it down into the center So I've got, I've got, I've got literally half. I've halved the area, so I have yes. the same amount of paper on the bottom as I have on the top. And you so turn I've... a square that is, um, the edges are horizontal and vertical, into a square that is tilted when you do that folding in. Okay, let's have a look at that for just lying, keeping it still there. Just let the camera catch up. Oh. It's moved. It's decided to sink down. Okay, so we've got a, a horizontal and vertical square. And I'm going to fold in. I'm going to literally halve the area of it. That's by the by, in a way. I'm halving the area. And kerpow, I have a tilted a square, square. A tilted square. But I've, I've discovered something else as well, Tony. By doing that, I'm also proving that those four corners are for four vertices are 90 degrees because they come together and sit directly over that central one and then they add up to 360 and they're all the same so because we proved that because we folded them over on each other so Pretty, that also shows it? that they're 90 degrees each of those vertices is 90 degrees which shows that this this tilted square is a square because 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 we folded over a square. And so this tilted square is definitely a square. These are definitely 90 degrees because we've got exactly the same rule that we've got the 90 degrees joining together in the middle. So these four vertices are 90 degrees. Therefore, this is a square. And we could, again, if we needed to, just to, we could fold it over to prove that this edge is the same edge, length as that edge, and that that angle is the same edge, that those angles are the same as each other we need you know if we feel the need to and um and there you have those edges are all all four edges are the same isn't it isn't it amazing what you can learn just by folding a piece of paper and of course a bit like origami and origami is great for learning mathematics but this is very simple you're not um it, it, anybody can do it, even quite young children. And rather than telling them properties of a square, they can discover them for themselves. And uh, mm -hmm. so let's move on. Now, look at this side. Uh, we've just done nine pins. What about 16 pins? Now, I'll give you for free that there are 20 possible squares. Can you find them all? So there's a challenge. And I'm not going to give you the answer to that if you want to. <laughs> Try and it's a challenge if you want to try and do it instead of playing Sudoku or, or a crossword or or, or um, word, wordly or something um, uh, or whatever you can have a go and and then here's another puzzle for you with twenty five spit pins there are fifty squares altogether can you find them all okay and and, and you then, have to use the the math skills so this is again where by playing these games, you're gaining math skills, so you have to do things like be systematic. These are uh, uh, the, the, the skills you need, A, to be an effective mathematician, B, they very, very useful math uh, life skills. So 
in order to find them all and to know you found them all, you have to be systematic, you have to be well organized, and and you also have to reason with yourself to make sure you have actually found them all, or you could reason with somebody else. These are all very important A mathematical skills, B life skills. Yes, and um Yes, and if you like puzzles, there's a challenge for you. And uh, you could do it on your geoboard or, or dotty paper. In fact, if you go to the uh, link on the Aiming High website, we'll, we'll, there's grids of dotty paper that if you can print them, you can use. Now, we're going to move on the, to the another. Link is in, the link is in the description. It will be, yes. It now, is. It is in the description, Tony. Let's think about another jigsaw. And this is a very simple jigsaw. And it has only seven pieces, OK? And four of the pieces are identical. If you put them on top of each other, they exactly match and correspond. They are the right angle triangles at the bottom there, um, the four blue triangles. And actually, they can, those can be any right angle triangles they don't have as long to be as, as long as they're so, all the same any right angle triangle that you want as long as all four are exactly the same yes i mean you could have the um half a square i mean you could have those angles equal but obviously that would be rather a special triangle and these are just any triangle yeah the joy so, of this is that it's any random triangle without symmetry that's the joy yes. of it and a then right angle right angle critical it has to be right angle triangle yes and then the squares are made in this puzzle so that the edges of the green square are exactly the same as the shortest edge on the blue triangles. So the green square matches the shortest edge of the triangle, okay? And the orange square matches the um, the, the other edge that's um, the, not the longest, the not the shortest. Yes, the one the between. The baby bear, okay. the mother bear, and the father bear. So it's the mother bear length and the medium length. It's the one that's straight across in the way you see it there. The okay. horizontal one, yeah. Yes, yes, and, and they exactly match. And so you can make your own puzzle um, and following what Caroline and I are talking about. And then the and pink then... one is follows the diagonal. Otherwise, if you know, if you remember this one, it's the hypotenuse. The yes. pink one so, is exactly the same length as the diagonal longest yes. edge. The longest edge of the blue triangle, right? Now then, um, it, it, what you... There are two puzzles. You've only got seven pieces, okay? And you can select five of these pieces together to make a square, okay? And then, you st then, all right, once you can do that, you can start again and say, now back to my seven pieces, which six pieces should I put together to make a square? And to, for very young children, to make it easier for them, and we'll show you this in a minute, you can draw an, an outside frame of your square into which they've got to fit those five pieces. And then when they do it with the other uh, version, they've got to fit the seven, the six pieces into these, this outer frame, which is a square frame, okay? So to make it easy, you can give them the square frame. And to, then you can show them one way the pieces fit into the frame. And then you can jumble up the pieces and ask them. We're going to show you the solution in a minute. And then you can jumble up the pieces and ask them to put them back into the frame. And they've just seen it done. So they uh, then will try to put them back. And if they've got a very good visual memory, they'll be able to remember what you showed them. Yeah, um, it's a challenge. It's enough of a challenge to repeat to duplicate what you showed them that's a nice challenge and then once they've done that then if they don't automatically find a, an extra possibility 
but it but that's a that's a nice challenge just in of itself and you might really not nice. show them you see you might not show them all seven pieces you might you might know which five pieces to choose and give them those five pieces and say can you put these into the into the um this frame to, to to fill the frame to to fit it all up so they fit tightly together and neatly together and of course we we've given you a clue because we told you that the green is mat will go neatly up to and exactly snugly fit against the short edge of the, the blue triangle and the orange will neatly fit against the um medium length edge and the pink one against the the longer stage so you can make it easier for your for the young child by giving them the pieces and saying put these five into the frame and then can you just repeat that tony because i had a terrible interruption can you just go back so that i can for the recording please okay so what i'm going to say is to make it easier for the young child you can give them the five pieces and say put these pieces into the frame because it's much more difficult if they've got to choose five from seven and then and then try and do it and of course you can give that sort of challenge to a older uh, an older um young the elder person or uh, to an adult but for the very young children it's an easy puzzle and um they'll enjoy doing it and what you're actually doing is you're la la laying the foundation for later learning, which will be really valuable foundation. And Caroline and I talk about the spiral learning path. We often talk about that. And what you're doing if you do this with young children, uh, as just a game, and once they get tired of it, then don't press it. Just ask, maybe come back to it another day, or they may will actually game. come back to it. It's 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 lovely when you're playing with really young learners. You you might introduce the the toy itself, so you introduce the pieces, and let them completely do whatever they want with it, and then you might maybe make an, a different square with it, and they might notice, or you might say that you've made a different square, and then you keep bringing the game out and playing different things with it, and it does evolve. It does evolve into them then creating their own squares some are more interested in the squares sooner some take longer to be interested in the squares but it does evolve into a more um go it, from free play into something that's more inquiry and with a with an objective but it still remains play but it's got it's slightly more guided but it does happen all you need to do is play it alongside them and they'll be looking at you and looking at what they're doing and think well i want to do what in my case, sometimes grandma or whoever, and, and they get curious about what you're doing. And then you can say, well, what if what could we do this other thing? And, and they get, and, and it's interesting how even very, very young, they can get very curious about it and spend, investigate it. And then they'll go off and, oh, I'm, I've had enough now, go off, but you can bring it out again another day. So what Caroline and I have been doing this afternoon is we've been building up to this point because we've been introducing folding a piece of square piece of paper and what can we what we can find out about the square from that. And then we looked at geo boards and then we looked at um, how many squares can you make on this geo board. So and the tilted squares. So we were actually laying bases for this particular um, interesting idea that we're, we're in the middle of talking about. So now when we come to upper primary, which is sort of eight to 11 year olds, um, now the children can cut out the pieces from a template to make the puzzles. Because of course you would do the cutting out, which you had five or six or seven year old probably. Um, but by the time they're seven or eight or nine, they should be able to cut the pieces out. So you print the pieces maybe, uh, or you can actually do more than that. You can actually draw them from scratch if you haven't got a printer. Um, and um, when they found solutions, they should be able to draw diagrams of those solutions. And um, as a, a parent or teacher, you might encourage the children to find all the solutions because there are several, not just one, and variations. And they can come back to it on other days. They don't have to find all the solutions on the first day. So there's a lot of scope. And you see, we've now developed from 
something a little more challenging for, for the slightly older children. And now we're not necessarily giving them the frame. I mean, they might, once they've got a solution, draw a frame round it so that they now know what the frame needs to look like. Um, and for 11 year olds and older, they can make their own puzzle pieces uh, following the um, description that we gave you earlier. So the, the, these blue triangles, as long as they're right angled and as long as they're identical to each other, and you have four of them and then you make the squares by matching the edge lengths to make sure they, they fit the, in, against the, the blue triangular pieces nice and neatly. So where do we go from there? Now, there are two solutions, okay? So imagine the frame, look at it and think about those two solutions. So each of those solution one and solution two, the five piece solution and the six piece solution, they fit, ex they're four triangles you have to look closely to see that those rectangles are actually made up of two triangles put together. And on the slide, it may be difficult for you to see, especially if you're looking at it on a phone. OK, but now you should be able to imagine this, that what you have done on the solution to is you made those two red, two blue rectangles, the two blue rectangles by putting two triangles together to make the one that's across at the top and two triangles together to make the one that's up and down on the left hand side. That's a huge okay. revelation in of itself is the amount of shapes you can make using two triangles or yes. just using triangles that just to yes. know that a rectangle is actually could be made out of two congruent triangles that's right that's and where congruent term. um you can introduce once um in, in, you know once a, a children are slightly older and you want them to know that 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 word that word congruent and it's important that they should learn it in secondary school okay so they are exactly so, the same and and therefore you put the two together and they make a rectangle but it's not something you know it's something that when you play with it and investigate it you think oh oh well and then if you play with it a lot then you just really know it and when you come to doing the geometry where they we have to work these things out. You say, well, I know that a rectangle is made up of two right angle triangles. Just know it. There's no, there's no mystery to it. There's no dis at that point. Then you can make the next discoveries. Well, what you can see here is that that pink square, we, we made it, we told you earlier that the length of the edge of the square was exactly the same as the length of the longest edge of the blue triangles. And there you see them. That's the secret that you can now fit those five pieces together to make um, a square and it will fit into those five pieces will fit into a square frame. And it's their same size. This is the beauty of, of taking the two and putting them inside the same frame. Is they, they, it doesn't necessarily look like it, but it so is. It's beautiful. So you can then take the pink the pink square out and you can move the um, blue triangles into the position you see them for solution two. And the spaces left are exactly right for you to put a green square and an orange square in to fill those places in the jigsaw. Now, what if we called the... We, we, can, I, can I give them letters yet? Tony, because this one for me was a huge. No, we're revelation. not going to bother with that today. Okay, it's just, we that, it's just, a, it's just that my, my, the one thing that my mother remembered was a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That was one thing that she remembered, you know, in her 70s. She said, Oh, a squared plus b squared equals you're c squared. A, you're again a step ahead of everybody, Caroline. I know, but that's why I say, Can I say the letters? It's just that I'm seeing squares there. That's why I'm saying it. I want you to observe right. that you're seeing squares. Yeah. Well, I wanted to make it totally free of algebra. At the, at yeah, but first. I know, but but it's squares. It's not algebra. It's the squares. The point is, well, uh, you've one got thing two that's squ one... got three squares there, and I what I just want to notice that they're squares. Yes. So what what Caroline is saying is the edge length of the 
um, the green square you can call edge length A, and the orange square B, and the pink square C, and then let's just take it step at a time, Caroline. Um, what you have got I'm there... too excited. <laughs> now, you can place the four triangles in the position for solution one. What can... Now, that's without the pink square. What can you say about the space left uncovered? Okay. So the space that's not covered by the squares. So the blue space, the blaze space that's taken up by the triangle. No, 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 Caroline. No. What it is, Caroline, is read what it says and I'll oh, repeat it. Oh, I did it. this before, didn't I? Here we go. Put the four triangles in the position. So the four triangles are in the box. So we have the four triangles. What do we have? Uncovered left? in what the middle. What is uncovered? So it's not the blue. It's it's the space that would be left. So there's you can, no green, you can, there's no you yellow can, and there's no pink. But let's do solution one. Okay? okay. Let's go back to what this says. Put the four triangles in position for solution one. Okay. And nothing else. Now you can put the pink in and take it out again. So you can see that what you can answer question two. What's the area of that space in the middle? between the four triangles. And you'll, as Caroline said, that if the edge length of the square is C, then the area of the square is C times C, which is C squared. But it's, and, but, and the thing is that what, what I meant as when I said square is that you can name it a square. So C squared can is something mysterious. When you say, oh, it's C squared, they become, it can become something mysterious, which is why I was emphasizing the square. It is a square, it is just a square of edge length C. And it, yes. it is, a, it is and that's, it's just a square and every edge is length C. So it's a square with length C, which just can be called, C, not just can be called C squared, but the point the is you area can make is... the connection. It helps you make the connection between the expression C squared and a square where every length is C. And you can actually make, connect the two with a mental image of there's a square where every edge is length C and the expression C squared and they're one and the same and this is this is the beauty of this this method and it what was very we were powerful. doing what we were doing earlier was warming you up to be thinking about areas okay and counting squares inside and understanding what areas were about a little bit more and so now to move on with this now move the four triangles you haven't got the pink square there. You're just going to move the four triangles into the position for solution two. And that's, now you see them as two rectangles. And they um, cover exactly the same space as they covered before. It's just that in a different shape. Yeah, and they're, they're in different positions they're in the frame. Positions, they form, make a different shape because they make rectangles instead of being four individual triangles. They're still four individual triangles, but together they form two rectangles. Well, what do you have left? You have two squares. Well, the, the big question is with the, just, just the four triangles in, but in the positions you see in, in solution two, What's left? Well, the area is the area for the green square, which is A times A area, and the area for the orange, which you see in that picture for orange square, if you put them in, um, and that's area B times B. And now the children will tell you, you're probably now with it, that the areas of the blue, whatever position they're in, in the frame, the blue squares, the blue triangles, the blue triangles take up the same area. And what's left in solution one, which is C squared, must be the same as what's left, that's the area of the pink, must be the same as what's left in solution two, which is the, to the sum of those two areas of the green and the orange squares, as you see them there, a squared plus B squared. And so that gives you a result, which is A squared 
plus b squared must be the same area as c squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or the area on the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. Now look at the picture on the right, solution two. The green triangle is up against the edge of the short, the shortest edge, and the orange of the mid, medium length edge. So those are the areas of, on the other two sides of the triangle. So the area on the hypotenuse is the sum of the areas on the other two sides. And when the children come up with that, without ever having met Pythagoras' theorem, you'll say, Brilliant! You've discovered a big theorem in mathematics. And, and this it was... is, I could never, well, it took me a while to understand why Tony was, was talking about the young learners being mathematicians. And I've, I've got it, I've got it now. That whenever the young learners make a discovery, a mathematical discovery, doesn't matter if it's been made a million times before them, they have made the discovery. Therefore, they are thinking mathematically, they are being mathematicians. Now, it's six o'clock, so we're going to have to wind up, but you see some um, uh, links there, but I just realized there isn't the link, and I will put it in for the um, app, for the, uh, the uh, Geoboard app, but okay. as Caroline said, just go... Um, to the App Store for, for Mac um, or the Play Store for um, Android devices, and you can find that app. But we'll give you the link. And so it's time to say goodbye. Oh, sorry, I took that away. That was rude of me. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> time. To, it's time to say. Right, uh, start again. Start again. It's. Time to Go. say goodbye. And <laughs> what I was going to say was, um, we hope that it, it's what you've seen today is um, something that was fun from beginning to end. Maths lessons should be enjoyable. And there's a, it, it's also very um, powerful to, for, to teach in such a way as the children think that they're playing games and yet they are learning and they're likely to remember a lot more than if the teacher just tells them these are the facts this is what you must know a squared plus b squared equals c squared and now this is how you use it and uh, so and then yeah, and it's, why yeah, should it's, it make any can, sense that can they come after that's what i was talking about talking about the squares the, the green square and the blue square whatever color they were the yellow square are the same as the pink square and then when you talk about a squared and b squared and c squared then it's like well yeah it's those squares and they can, can make the connections and then the visualization is and they've got they've got the the experience to actually make sense when you start making it more formal saying a squared plus b squared equals c squared Mm. Well, we hope that um, this has been interesting, and we thank you now. If you're still with us, thank you very much for joining us. Today. Well, we do have one viewer right this second. We've still got one viewer. Thank you very much for joining us. So I'm just going to say I'm going to just give the the last greeting just for just so that for the recording. So thank you very much for joining us, and Tony, you say it as well. Goodbye, everybody, and thank you for being with us. See you next time.